Welcome to Pause on Purpose, and thank you again for joining me. I I so appreciate being here with you, and uh, as I'm recording this, um, I know that's a green screen behind me, but uh, it is actually raining where I'm at right now as I'm recording this, so it's rather fitting. But I want to thank you, um, and I hope maybe you brought a cup of coffee with you as well, as we're just sharing what God is doing in his word as we're enjoying this pause, allowing Christ to speak to us, allowing him to show his face, and we hear his voice. So just pause for a minute. Take a deep breath in, and then release that. We're talking about understanding this week and how to pray for that. Yesterday we learned... We pray that we would understand what the hope, the, the incredible hope, the confident hope that we have. Today, we're praying that we would understand the power. See, there's two things that will help us propel forward. Hope and power. God knows that. The Apostle Paul knew that. We're still in Ephesians chapter 1. This is verses 19 through the end of the chapter. I'm going to hone in on 19, though, because this is really our pause on purpose verse. Paul continues to pray. He says, I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. Well, what power is that? Well, Paul says, let me tell you, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and then seated him, seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Wow. You talk about power that's available to us. There it is. I don't know any power greater than the power of raising someone from the dead. Do you? No. I mean, that, <laughs> that's better. That's better than a, than a Hemi train. Uh, Hemi, Hemi uh, carburetor and a Dodge Charger, right? It's better than the power and the torque that you can find in any automobile. It's greater power than any microwave could zap food. It's greater power than lightning. God's power is infinite. And that power is available to you and me. So Paul says... He's praying for the church in Ephesus to be able to move forward in their faith, to walk in their faith. But he says, I'm praying that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power, that power that raised Christ from the dead. That's what we need to pray for. If we're stuck, we're stagnant, if we feel like we're kind of losing our edge, we need to pray for understanding and that great power. And yesterday, the great hope that we have, the confident hope. See, those two things are going to help us get off the dock, if you will, and get into the game. Otherwise, we're just going to sit on the bench and we're not going to be able to move forward because we're missing something. And the enemy likes to blind us from those two things. He likes to try to absorb those from us, hope and power. Because he knows if he can make us doubt it, or not know about it, eclipse us from that, he's got us. Don't let him do that. You've got hope, beloved, wonderful hope, eternal hope, and you have power, eternal, everlasting power. The same power that not only raised Christ from the dead, but also seated him in the heavenlies at the right hand throne of God. That's available to you and me. That's how much God loves us. That's how much he wants us to walk in his grace, to walk forward in our understanding. Is he wants us to do that with great hope and great power. So today, how do we gain that power? We pray for it. We ask God for it. And when we do that, God will ensure that power is available to us. You try that today. Pray for your friends, pray for yourself, and see how God's power works in and through us 
Beloved, have a great day and go with God because he goes with you.